Hello and welcome to the episode 327 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, among other things, we have an early Quarryman gig, a BBC audition and the band's last appearance on Ready Steady Go. Let's start with the 23rd of November 1957 and the Quarrymen coming back to the new Club Moor Hall in Liverpool for a second appearance after the one described in episode 283. The Quarrymen featured Langari on T chest bass, Eric Griffiths on guitar, Colin Hanton on drums and John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice. The concert had been organised by Charlie McBain. Moving on to 1960, we find what remained of the Beatles, Pete Best on drums, John Lennon and Paul McCartney on guitar and voice, and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, on the stage of the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, for the continuation of their residency. Naturally, George Harrison was in Liverpool after his deportation two days before, see episode 325 for that. George was back with the Beatles for the 23rd of November 1961 engagement at the Cavern Club in Liverpool for the usual two-hour lunchtime gig. The band had remained a quartet, though, with Paul McCartney switching to bass when Sutcliffe had stayed in Hamburg. Big day in 1962. The Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, reached London in the morning and performed the 10-minute lunchtime slot at the same James's Church Hall, starting at 12.20 pm. In fact, the gig was an addition to allow the BBC to assess the band for future TV appearances. Curiously, the engagement resulted from a couple of letters sent to the BBC staff from a David John Smith of Preston. The BBC assuming that Smith was managing the band, replied to him setting up an audition for the 6th of November. Smith sent the BBC letter to NAMS Enterprises, allowing Clive Epstein, in charge of the management operation, while his brother Brian was in Hamburg with the Beatles, to rearrange the date for today. See what a fan can do? Share this episode with your friends, talk about this podcast with those in the known, and increase the Beatles' love all over the world. For other ways to help me to produce more and better music-related content for you, check out www.simonmas.com support. On that page, you'll also find out how you can acquire the deluxe extended version of the podcast with hours of extra content. Thank you for being fab! After the audition, the Beatles rushed back home for an evening performance at the Tower Barroom in Wallasey, for the Lancashire and Cheshire Arts Bowl. They shared the bill with Billy Kramer and the Coasters, the Lude Heard Jazz Band, and the Clan MacClare the Pipe Band. On this date in 1963, the Beatles were at the City Hall in Newcastle upon Tyne for another two houses of their ongoing autumn tour. On the 23rd of November 1964, instead, the Fabs filmed the mimed performance of I Feel Fine, She's a Woman, Babies in Black and Kansas City Hey 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 in front of a live audience at the Wembley Studios in London. The footage, plus a brief chat of the four with show host Kate Fordyce, was to be aired for the third appearance of the Beatles on Ready Steady Go, on the 27th of November between 6.08 and 7 pm. It turned out to be their last. More filming in 1965, this time for a slightly different type of TV appearance. The Beatles returned at the Twickenham Film Studios to film promotional clips to distribute to the various TV stations in Britain and abroad to promote their new album and single. By this time, the band had had enough of endless rounds of TV shows and, perhaps thanks to their involvement in Granada TV's The Music of Lennon and McCartney and due to the modular structure of that program, 
They thought that the new approach could be good to promote their releases without actually having to tape the same type of material over and over. Now the band could appear in any British, American, Australian and Japanese TV show with minimum effort and maximum results and profits. It was NAMS Enterprises which financed the operation under the direction of Joe McRath and the stage production of Nicholas Ferguson. After two days of stage building, today the Beatles arrived to the studios to film, starting from the late afternoon. Three different versions of We Can Work It Out were completed and likewise for Day Tripper. In addition, the crew filmed one clip for Help, one for Ticket to Ride and finally two for I Feel Fine, although one of them was discarded by Brian Epstein. By the early hours of the 24th, the band was ready to go home. Let's move on with the final entry of the episode, 23rd of November 1967. The editing of Magical Mystery Tour went placidly on at Norman's Film Productions as usual. Meanwhile, at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, engineer Malcolm Davis made copies of Yellow Submarine, All You Need Is Love, Eleanor Rigby, A Day in the Life, with a little help from my friends, Yesterday, Strawberry Fields Forever, All Together Now, Michelle, When I'm 64, Nowhere Men, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, It's All Too Much, Help, Love You Too, and You Know My Name, Look Up the Number, for the Yellow Submarine animated feature film. You Know My Name naturally featured only the completed rhythm track. Not all of these songs were used in the soundtrack of the film, naturally. Also in Abbey Road, between 2.30 and 5.45 pm, and between 8 pm and 1 am, George Harrison kept on working on his soundtrack for the film Wonderwall. Well, this is a good time to close the episode for the simple reason that there's nothing else left to say. See you tomorrow for more stories about the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.